The Journey of the Noble Narbo, <clears throat> written by Daniel Errico, illustrated by Christian Colabelli. Far below the ocean waves, a Narbo lay in bed. All night long, his Narbo dreams kept swimming in his head. He dreamt a dream of swimming up to sea, the Sakai above, lit up by the sun in colors he just knew he would love. But Narbos never swam that high, their fins were much too small, their tails were thin and floppy, which didn't help at all. This Narbo liked his fins and had no problem with his tail, so when he woke, he knew that he just couldn't, wouldn't fail. I'm swimming up above the waves to see the sky of blue. I never seen it once, and now it's time I do. But the other narbles warned him that he shouldn't swim so high, as did the blithe fish family that always swam close by. No Gnarbos ever swam that high, it simply isn't done. A blithe fish might just make the trip, but we know you are not the one. Gnarbos don't have flappers like all of us blithe fish do. You don't even have l coggers like the swimming Gungaloo. But the narble didn't listen and he left his friends behind. No silly blithe fish family could ever change his mind. He swam up past the boulders made of spongy gishigosh and flew right by the herd of floating feeding fipple flush. His fins were getting tired, but he knew he couldn't stop, so he kept swimming faster, trying hard to reach the top. Just then a hungry varkle blocked the narble with his fin. He grabbed him by his tail and brought him right up to this, his chin. I never had a narble, this would be a tasty treat. But you are much too thin and tiny for big old me to eat. So the Gnarbo just kept swimming and didn't dare to stop until he heard the sound of a great big bubble pop. He turned around to see that he was in a bit of trouble. The sound he heard was that of silver Subalubi. The Gnarba tried to hide somewhere that he could safely stay, but the Suba Lubl saw him and was headed right his way. Oh, Mr. Suba Lubl, please don't eat me for lunch. I bring a yummy plan instead for you to sit and munch. I never seen a Gnarba to try to swim this high before. Was it? Little fish that you are up here looking for. If I could see the sky just once, I'll be happy fish. To do one flip above the waves would be my only wish. Well, sorry, silly Gnarble, but I cannot let you go. If it's Subalubble dinner time, you should have stayed below. The Gnarble covered back in fear and shook him from fin to fin but then he saw a school of fish called shiny glimmy glin the glimmy glim swam right past the subalubi face and the gnarble grabbed a glimmy fin and quickly left the place The narble swam up higher still until he saw some light. He knew it had to be the sun 
And oh, was it's a sight. <clears throat> Closely by a plink was sleeping, lying on his back. He rubbed his giant belly as he dreamed about the snack. The gnarbo smiled happily and set his fins a swimming, but he didn't see the plink wake up for he was busy grinning. The gnarble almost made it to the surface of the sea, but the plink chomped down and swallowed him as he was as heavy a pea. The gnarble sat inside the plink and started softly crying. He never made it out, so was there any point of trying? But the gnarp knew he would come too close to quit and give it up now. There must be some way out of here. There's gonna be to be somehow. So the gnarp swam around inside, trying very hard to think. And while he did, his floppy tail was tickling the plink. The plink was very ticklish and he couldn't hold it on. He tried to cover it up his love with his giant plinklish fin. <laughs> but his mouth was open long enough for the gnarbo to swim free. He swam so fast the hungry plink did not have time to see. Far above the ocean floor, above the gnarbo's homes, Above the blyish families and dancing water gnomes. Above the swimming gungaloo and slimy dundle dun. A gnarbo flip above the waves and smile at the sun. It's the end.